All right, section 11.5, quadratic graphs or quadratic functions in their graphs. So we only have one thing to do in this section, uh, but that one thing technically has four sub pieces or three, five sub pieces, whatever it is, but we're gonna be graphing some different forms of quadratics. So we have f of x equals x squared plus k and along with that one, we have f of x equals x minus h squared. We have f of x equals x minus h quantity squared plus k. So putting these two things together, we have f of x equals ax squared. And then we have f of x equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. So you may recognize these as the transformations that we talked about way back a few weeks ago. And that's what these are, but we're looking at them specifically for quadratics, so a lot of this should feel familiar. And then this last thing is the one that we want to be focusing on the most, is just putting everything together into one. So we have our shifts, and we have our dilations, our stretches. <clears throat> so let's talk about our quadratic graphs. Remember these are parabolas. And they are built off of the general parabola x squared make sure this is straight just leave that there for now two three one two three four two three negative one negative two negative three one, two, three, four. So remember for f of x equals x squared, we go through zero, zero. We go through one, one. We go through negative one, one. We go through two, four. We go through negative 2, 4. And my classic trick, just make your dot bigger when you don't go through it perfectly. So that's our standard x squared. And all of these different graphs that we're going to see, remember just like we did in transformations back in was a chapter 10 is going to be based off of this so we're always going to be thinking of these five points specifically when we do these transformations so let's talk about the first two these are our shifts so we'll start with f of x equals x squared plus k Remember, if k is greater than 0, then this is a vertical shift. Of x squared, then this is up k units. And if k is less than 0, this is a vertical shift. x squared down k units. So I'm going to constantly be bringing this graph back as we go through the rest of this section so we can look at its graph to remind ourselves 
when we're doing these transformations. Let's do a couple examples of these vertical shifts now. <coughs> So we are going to graph f of x equals x squared plus 2 and g of x equals x squared minus 3. So let's go ahead and do this on the same big axes here. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to go scale my axes by two here two, four, six, eight, ten. Six, five, ten. And same thing here two, four, six, and ten. Six, eight, ten, negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight, negative ten. Oops, that's a little far. Ten, two, four, negative, negative, negative six, negative eight, negative ten. So the first thing I'm going to do is just give myself a little sketch of the original x squared, what it should be on our axes here. Right, because that's what we are basing our graphs off of, is this. So this doesn't need to be a full-on graph, just plot those five points that we talked about. 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 4, and negative 2, 4. And then just a little dashed graph to give me some ideas of what it needs to look like. And then just as we did for transformations, the reason we use these <coughs> is because we don't have to replot any points. We just take each of these. So for f of x, I'll do in green here f of x takes all of the points and adds 2 to their y value, so it just moves up 2. So 0, 0 goes up to 0, 2. 1, 1 goes up to 1, 3. Negative 1, 1 goes up to negative 1, 3. 2, 4 goes up to 2, 6. And negative 2, 4 goes up to negative 2, 6. And then we graph that. So this will be f of x, so that means this is 2, 6, 1, 3, 0, 2, negative 1, 3, negative 2, 6. Okay, so that's our f of x. We just moved each of these points up 2. So if, like we talked about when we did transformations, if you know these five points for the quadratic and you just use your transformations, your shifts, it makes this relatively painless and quick. Now g I'll do in blue here. So g of x takes that original sketch here and instead of going up 2 it goes down 3. So 0, 0 goes down to 0, negative 3. 1, 1 goes down to 1, negative 2. Negative 1, 1 goes down to negative 1, negative 2. 2, 4 goes down to 2, 1. And negative 2, 4 goes down to negative 2, 1. And then this goes through like this. So this is 0, negative 3. 1, negative 2. Negative 1, negative 2. Over here, this point is negative 2, 1. 
and this point over here is 2, one, positive 1. And this would be our g of x in blue. <coughs> so the shapes should look relatively the same, because uh, it's just a shift up and down. This is nothing more than our vertical shift that we saw back when we did transformations. So our next type of quadratic f of x equals x minus h squared. So remember if h is greater than 0, we're going to have x minus h squared, and that is x squared shifted to the right h units and if h is less than 0 we're going to have x plus h squared which is x squared shifted to the left. Don't know why there's so much space there. Left. H units. So our horizontal shifts. Left and right. Remember that inside these parentheses when H is negative we have the plus and it's opposite the sign that we see, unlike the vertical shifts where the plus means up and minus means down. For these horizontal shifts, plus means left, negative means right. We have to just be aware of that. So let's go ahead and graph two of these again. So we're going to graph f of x equals x minus 3 squared and g of x equals x plus 1 half squared. That's a 3. Alright, so sneak this in here. Now because we know what the regular x squared looks like, this graph again, since I'm just moving left and right, I can make my axes look similar to this. I just have to make sure that I account for three more and one half more when I draw my axes. So they're going to be virtually the same as they were in our initial one with mostly just the bottom graph here. because I'm not moving up and down, just moving left and right. So we're going to extend 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, and because my mind wants symmetry, negative 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And again, if you start by just giving yourself the 5 points that we normally have on x squared, 3, 2, 4, just a little dotted version of the parabola. Just for idea of shape. These are the points we're moving. So I'll do f of x in green again. So f of x is taking each of these and moving it to the right three. So zero, zero moves to the right 
0, 3. 1, 1 moves to the right, 1, 4. Negative 1, 1 moves to the right to 2, 1. 2, 4 moves to the right to 5, 4. That looks about right, right there. And negative 2, 4 moves to the right to 1, 4. Like so. And then we have our graph connecting the dots. Again, you mess up like I just did. Just make the point bigger. So this is 5, comma 4. This is 4, comma 1. This is 3, 0 in here. This is 2, comma 1. And this is 1, comma 4. And this is our f of x right here. So just moving each of these points 3 to the right. All right, nothing we haven't done. We did this back to transformations. And then for g of x, I'll do that one in blue. Since it's plus, we're going to the left. So from here, we go to the left 1 half. So 0, 0 just gets moved over 1 half here to negative 1 half, 0. 1, 1 moves a half over to 1 half, 1. Negative 1, 1 moves to negative 1.5, 1. 2, 4 moves half over to 1.54 right here. And negative 2, 4 moves half over to negative 2.54 right here. And then we have our other parabola. Like that. So this point was 1.5 comma 4. This point here was, I need more space. Yeah, we'll just do this. This is 1 half comma 1. This was negative 1 half comma 0 right there. This was negative 1.5 comma 1. And this is negative 2.5 comma 4. And so just moving back and forth to make sure we have the right graph. <coughs> Excuse me. So individually, each of these transformations, horizontal shifts and vertical shifts, are easy enough on their own. It's when we start combining them that we can use some more tricks, which is really what we're getting to in this section. So when we combine them, we're looking at f of x equals x minus h squared plus k. So now instead of thinking about the h and the k so much, what they do to the original graph, we say the vertex is at h k. And the axis of symmetry Symmetry is x equals h. And then you want to be thinking over 1, up 1, and then over 2, up 4, because that's how the old graph works. So if we go back to this for a second here, I'll uncover that. So from our vertex, we're over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. So if we have our vertex, we can construct our graph without it. So let's look at an example. We're going to 
line to graph f of x equals x minus 3 squared plus 1. So our new vertex is 3 comma 1. So I'm going to set up a graph here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, sure, we'll go to seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four, five, six, seven. So our new vertex, as we said, has three comma one. And now we're thinking over one in either direction, we go up one, over one, up one, so four up to two. Right there. And then over one, up to two, two, two. And then over two, up four from one, so over two, up four puts us at five, five. And over 2 at 1, up 4 puts us at 1, 5. And then we just connect the dots. So we have 5, 5, 4, 2, 3, 1. 2, 2, and 1, 5. And this is f of x. And you can simplify this a little bit more if you use your axis of symmetry, which is why we talk about it. If you look at your axis, you only need to plot, once you have your vertex, half of these, and then just mirror them. So let's say that we plot that half. We say, okay, over one, up one, over two, up four. Well, then we come over here, we just go one, two, one, two, and plot that point. And over here, we go over one, one, and plot that. So you can use that axis of symmetry so that you can graph even less points. So I'll do that on the next one. But this is the idea we want to be thinking when we have this form. So notice. There's nothing here, this is a one, because this is just vertical and horizontal shifts on that x squared function. When we have a coefficient out front here, then things change. So that's what we're looking at next. So this is for f of x equals ax squared. We'll start with the basic one. So f of x, still has its vertex at 0, 0 for ax squared. If the absolute value of a is greater than 1, f of x is x squared stretched vertically by a factor of a if the absolute value of a is less than 1 f of x is x squared stretched vertically by a factor, oh, it's not stretched, it's shrunk. Otherwise, they'd be the same thing. Shrunk vertically by a factor of a. And 
and then this has a couple extra rules. So we look at the absolute value of that leading number first, and then we look at what the leading number was without the absolute value. So if a is negative, f of x opens down. So it'll do this. And if a is positive, f of x opens up like a regular parabola. So we have a couple things to look at here. So let's go ahead and look at one or two examples. <clears throat> Let's graph f of x equals negative 2x squared and g of x equals 1 half x squared. So I'm going to give myself one set of axes. We'll do this on the same set. Feel free to do it on different sets if you'd like. Uh, if you're going to do it on the same set, make sure you give yourself a nice size set of axes so you have enough points here, or enough space to give your points. Uh, so let's see, what are we going to scale by? We'll scale by 1s on the x's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we'll go all the way to 8. 2, 3, 4, 7, 8. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. And on the y's, I think we'll do twos. One, two, four, five, six, seven. We'll go negative two, negative four, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative, whoops, that was negative eight. This is negative 10. This is negative 12, negative 14. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 8, 10, 12, 14. <coughs> so I'll do f of x in green. So looking at our value, we know we're opening up the vertex still at 0, 0 or we're not opening up, we're opening down because it's negative, and then it's a vertical stretch of two. So there are two ways we can take care of this. You can do the change in opening first or second. I typically do it second. So I think about, or I typically do it first. So I know that I'm opening up, and then if I was just negative x squared, would just be one negative 1, 1, and then flipped, and 1, 1, and then flipped. So negative 2x squared should be 1, 2, multiplying by 2, and then flipped. So 1, negative 2 now, negative 1, 2, and then flipped. Should be negative 1, negative 2. And then we would have 2, 8, and then that gets flipped to 2, negative 8. And then negative 2, 8 gets flipped to negative 2, negative 8. And then we graph. And graph. 
left. So this is 2, negative 8, 1, negative 2, 0, 0, negative 2, negative 8, negative 1, negative 2, right there. And this is our f of x. And so if you think, well, that just looks like the regular parabola, it's because I changed my scale. So if you want to see what it would look like, what negative x squared would look like, that should be negative 1, 1, and then flipped. Negative 1, negative 1, 1 here. 1, 1 here. And then negative 2, negative 4 here. And 2, 4 right here. And so this would be what the regular negative x squared is, that dashed line. Make it out a little darker. So you can see there is a difference. And the reason why my graph looks basically like this graph is because I changed the scale so I could fit it better. Okay, so that was f of x. So now we'll do g of x. I'll do that one in blue. So this opens up vertex still at 0, 0. And now we're vertically shrinking it. So we're taking it and squishing it down by a factor of 2. So just like we did here, that's just like multiplying our y values from our original by 1 half. So we normally have 1, 1 times a half. We now have 1, 1 half. Something like right here. We instead of negative one one, we have negative one one half. Instead of two four, we have two two. Instead of negative two four, we have negative two two. And so this graph looks like this. And it's nice and wide. So this is 2, 2, this is 1, 1 half, this is negative 2, 2, and this is negative 1, 1 half. Now a little darker to see. This is our g of x. And again, if we want to see what x squared would look like on this, on these axes, we would have 0, 0. We would have 1, 1, which would be about right here. We would have 2, 4, which would be up here. 1, 1 would be about here. And 2, 4 would be about here. And this would look something like this. And so you can see we've taken that black dashed old x squared, what it would have been, and just squished it down to the blue one, what g of x is. Just like we did down here, we took this black x squared and stretched it out by pulling these points down to make f of x. So we have one last graph, put it all together now. So this is f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So the whole shebang now. So again, since we have the H and K, we're going to be thinking about vertex. So the vertex is now at H, K. And then we apply the rules of AX squared to a parabola.
with this new vertex. So my recommendation is to graph x minus h squared plus k first, then graph a times x minus h squared plus k, because that's what we need to do. Let's try an example. So we are going to graph f of x equals 1 half times x plus 2 squared plus 5. So our vertex is negative 2, 5, and we have a vertical compression or vertical shrink by 1 half. So I'm going to give myself some axes here. I guess I need to scale these axes, don't I? So let's scale by 2 seems like a good idea. Eh, maybe once. Oh, let's do 2s. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 14, 16. And we'll just do 2s. 4, 6, 2, 4, 6, 8. I think we can do ones on the X and it will look just fine. So we'll do ones here. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, and if we need it, we'll go out to negative eight. We might need it. So I'm not gonna put any tick marks on the negative y axis because I know by the one half it's opening up. So we might want to add that here. It opens up. That's another piece of information. So I'm going to start by plotting my new vertex, negative 2, 5, which would be about right here. And then from here, as I said, let's graph as if the one half wasn't there. So we should be thinking over one, up one, right there. Over two, up four, so up to here. Then over one, up one, puts us here or just mirror one, one. Or mirror this point all the way over or just go over two, up four. So we should be at negative four, nine about right. So this is just a little too far. So the black one here is just x plus 2 squared plus 5. That's what we graphed. And the reason I say graph these first is because now we can use these points when we compress, when we shrink it. So we're multiplying each of these by a half. So, <coughs> we need to shrink things now, and we would have our next points just shrink by a half, so this gets half as small down to here, 
this gets half as small down to here. And this gets half as small down here. And this gets half as small down here. And then when we just connect that graph. And those would be half the points that we normally have. So you can see this isn't the best way. As we know, we have better ways of graphing quadratics, uh, which we'll be talking about in the next section. So I know that these graphs are using transformations is challenging and it's not that much fun. But just know that it, it's possible. And if you are not really on board with this, know that in the next section, 11.6, we'll be talking about a different way to graph quadratics, which might, might hit home with you a little bit more. But you do want to be able to identify the pieces. So your new vertex, what your compression or expansion is, are you shrinking or stretching? And what are you shrinking or stretching by? What way does it open up? So if you can identify these three things, if the graphing is difficult for you in this section, that's okay. We're going to be looking at another way to graph in the, sec in the, in the next section. But as long as you can identify these three things, that's the big thing we want to take out of this section, is identifying new vertices, which direction your parabola opens, and whether you have a shrink or a stretch, and what you're shrinking or stretching by. Okay, So that is the end of 11.5.